And I'd like to present you guys the John of Haas Esbothite Couture Fashion Show Press Conference. Okay, then let's start the uh, question here. And I'd like to call John Pham from MOD Exchange. He's one of our media sponsor, Discover, Connect, and Inspire. So, you can start the question. Hello, everybody. Thank you for having me today. My name is John from Mod Exchange. Uh, my question is for the iconic fashion designer, John of the How are you doing today, sir? Uh, very good. Great. I'm happy to find you, uh, everyone right here. <laughs> Bubbly wine. <laughs> yeah, my question is to you, like, once again, I do love your designs. Um, you first showcased, um, you know, your clothing line, and now you're moving to towards a more, um, your, your bow tie designs and so forth. Can you tell me more, uh, more about your bow tie? Um, I started uh, doing the bow ties, I think, a couple of years ago, when I had the opportunity to collaborate with, um, uh, Doria Bay Isabel Diana, she's like the grand matriarch of this uh, very prominent uh, Filipino family and like, they're like business uh, family. Um, yeah, so uh, she's taking care of this uh, tribal women in Mindoro in the Philippines and um, you know like in the beginning she like teach them how to become more of a civilized uh, person because they just live in the mountains uh, in Mindoro. So uh, she built them homes and then uh, she also provided them uh, work. And when I got the, uh, the chance to uh, see her, I volunteered to help her to teach the women tribe to do embroidery. And now this becomes the uh, sustainable livelihood for the Mongolian women. But now they're the ones who's making my bow tie and they do the embroidery for my for the gowns I'm doing for all my fashion shows. Thank you very much. Wow. And these are for the models. You, know, you guys look fabulous out there today. Thank you. Some good looking crowd up. Actually, a good looking panel. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, uh, tell me, I think I asked one of the models today. So, what does it mean to you when you are wearing one of John Abalaza's uh, pieces when you're running, walking down that runway? Uh, this, this goes to any one of you if you guys want to answer. Mr. United States, Jesus Camarena. What it really means is, since he said he's a family, so um, it's not just a product that a fabric is, or someone, a story is just selling. It's to help not just his line, but a family in Philippines. And the meaning of it is that um, it, it's natural. It comes from beans, and um, it's a triumph from Philippines. And uh, it's a pleasure for me being a model for him and inspire I feel say the products that they bring from Philippines into the United States. And uh, I don't know, I'm just happy and so blessed to be able to model and help the families in the Philippines. I'm not Filipino, but I'm Latino and I'm with them too. Thank you very much. <laughs> and this question is for John Abbas again. So, you know, Looking back, what inspired you? Like basically, what did you first, um, you know, you know what, I'm going to be a fashion designer. What did that first spark in your life? You know what, I just, my passion is for great, beautiful things. You know, what did that start? Um, I think at the beginning of my career, I already highly inspired by the environment and um, the things I see around me. Like, I love seeing. Uh, the Philippines, very beautiful sceneries and our natural resources. And, um, and after that, I feel like I'm responsible now to really do something to contribute on how to protect the mother nature because Philippines is so blessed with very beautiful natural uh, resources. And so somehow I try to really like draw inspiration from our country, from our tribes, you know, and. The one thing that is important to me is that we get to uh, contribute something 
for the betterment of uh, the export chain of uh, the as well. Thank you. And I just have one more question I'd say for today. <laughs> I know, that's okay. I'm going down, I don't want to hear more, uh, so I have some questions. <laughs> uh, team Pacquiao? Yes, Team Pacquiao, yes. Woo! Thank you for being here. Uh, here's uh, another question. Uh, yeah, it's uh, going to be a good one. Yeah. But you know, uh, <laughs> it's, it's, it, it, it's a clock. So the thing, uh, I'm going to Gianni's very popular with the Philippines. But I know this guy, the accident, I know it. I just met him one week ago. And he said, Do you know Lilia now? I said, What name, you know? Because we're going there tomorrow. Uh, yeah, Lilia now. Um, that's uh, Manny's back here. Oh, we're going there. Can you accompany me there at the house? So we went there, you know. Uh, and we were really surprised you know, because. Actually, I'm supporting Manny Pacquiao again. So I'm, if you get the pen, I'm coordinating with it. Celebrity game. And especially right now, uh, we are supporting the Manny Pacquiao Foundation. So we have a big event on December 13th with the cooperation of Mayor Salverna. So that's this also. So it's a, it's a big event. And sometimes, you know, they told me, I don't money needs money. You know, if you have money, why are you supporting the Money Pocket Foundation? A simple question, how about the IRS? How about the McDonald's? How about Gates? How about the foundation and still asking money? So we have to support because he's doing a great job. He's spending his own money, you know, he's spending his own money. I know him, money is very humble, you know. If you meet him, you cannot say no from him, guys, you know. Hopefully you can visit at the house. And most of the guys have been there. And Mayor Santarina knows him well. And the reason why we are supporting this cause because you know, we have this MPS, you know. So we're doing an auction for the limited auction to support the uh, Mr. Jan Passion Show. And the proceed, some of the proceeds will go over on, on the IL Foundation. So it's limited edition, so it's Limited. So, if you have some people who are really interested to to be, you know, you are welcome to do so. So, thank you very much for inviting us here, and uh, we support we have this event instead. Then we support the Yale Foundation. At the same time, uh, hopefully, you can support our foundation too, Money Pocket Foundation. Thank you. Take turns, you know. Okay. Come, uh, Emma Cavins, yeah. our bestseller author. Yes, and mm -hmm. I'm also the host of Magnetic and Memorable Show. So you all are very magnetic and memorable. So I'm very honored to be here. Um, John, I am, for the first time, I actually Googled you because I met you about a couple of weeks ago. And I, have, I still have ties in the Philippines as far as the fashion industry and stuff. And I was really blown away when I saw your creations because when I first met you, I thought you just did bow ties that are, you know, made by millions. So, can you tell us a little bit about your background as far as the fashion industry is concerned? How long have you been in it? You know, what got you started? With, and what what made you create these beautiful gowns inspired by nature? Because you're like a being on your own. Okay, um, I've been in the business for like 28 years, and I am actually a graduate of horticulture, so I studied about flowers. So somehow I guess like being a uh, horticulturist is like way advantage in me as a practice, because I draw in, mainly uh, draw inspiration from nature, like what I have told earlier. Like every time I design, I like, consult flowers, like for the color, you know, or the shape of the, the, the skirt I'm gonna do. I, I, I try to study the shape of the petals of uh, every single flower I can, uh, I can see. Um, my first job is um, as a manager of the horticultural garden project of Mrs. Marcos in Aurora Garden. So from the beginning, I really like involved in flowers already. And I stayed with her for like three years and then afterwards I landed a job in Taipei 
in this very classic hotel owned by the Philippine Business Cycle Tan Yu. It's called the Asia World Class Hotel and I was with there for like eight years as a florist decorator of the hotel. And during my stint there, there are like top Filipino designers who come to Taipei to present fashion shows and all that. And like at the end of my uh, tedious job being a uh, flower arranger and decorator of the hotel, I volunteer at night to be like a wardrobe assistant for these designers during their show. So I literally like go to the backstage, help the models to dress up, and I'm, I'm simply like amazed with the, the designer's collection. And then I feel like I got so excited about seeing all these models start their way to the runway. And I really admire how the designers create every um, piece of creation they present in the runway. So uh, I got this feeling of like, I told myself, like, I think I want to do this and probably I can do this, you know, like, so after eight years in Taiwan, I flew back home and tried to uh, study fashion illustration in Manila, the big, uh, premier fashion art school, and then I went to Singapore to further enhance my uh, illustrating work. As in the beginning, when I first attempted to uh, do a, uh, make a sketch of a gown that's in my mind, I was like, very funny, I feel like I'm, I'm uh, drawing a grasshopper. Like, <laughs> no, I cannot think about this uh, a woman, is this I cannot really like, express my myself very well. So I think for a designer it's important that you know how to somehow draw you know, or do a sketch. Okay, so um to cut the story short, I think I have a long journey uh, on my way somewhere up here. You know, it took me a lot of hard work, dedication and so passionate in my craft and I really put my entire life into this. You know, I um, yeah but I think there are like some highlights in my career that I can say that is really very important to me. And somehow I think this is like the breakthrough or like maybe the string board to who I am right now when I did in nineteen ninety eight during the celebration of the Philippine Centennial, the 100 years Independence Day celebration. The Philippine Centennial Commission gave it the task to uh, replicate the personal belongings of our national hero, Dr. Serizal. They asked me to copy at least eight pieces of his collection, uh, which are housed, the original ones which are housed in Port Santiago in Manila and in Cebu, who happens to be housed at the University of Southern Philippines because I think the owner of the university is like from the lineage of uh, one of Rizal's uh, sister. So they said that like everybody said that I'm made of uh, faithful replica of the collections and it has traveled around the world. I brought it to Europe, I brought it to Toronto, I brought it to the United States. So I think that alone gives so much honor to me up to now. Like every time I bring it to another country, they really credit me for that. Uh, that work. But at the same time, I believe I need like, to um, establish my name as a good artist, which I just, I believe like recently admitted to myself that I done something really not bad, you know, like, but there was a point in my life that I cannot admit that I have a name already. I feel like I'm just a normal person, but it's actually the other people who let me realize, no, John, you're not ordinary. You've done so much for yourself. You've done so much for the society and you've done so much for your country. And I think that's one thing that I'm really proud of, okay? And then I think the, also the one thing that makes me truly happy and when, when I was started to uh, really help and be involved in my advocacy to help charities back home in uh, the Philippines. And I remember like from day one of my fashion designing career, I've done like 39 fashion shows in Manila and like maybe 20 shows all over the world. I always have like, charities that benefits the proceeds of my show. I help the Aitas of the Pinatubo, I help churches, I help uh, consultation of UPTGH, I help the Pedratic Ward of University of Santo Tomas, and most recently I'm very focused in helping this um, institution in Cebu called St. Martin de Porres, and they take care of children with autism and Down syndrome, and I've been helping them for like the last five years. And the other one is like the Mangyan uh, tribal women, which is under the care of Tony Bay, Sugal de Ayana. Yeah, if I may add something about this thing, you're like helping charities or helping someone to benefit in what you're doing. 
I think it's not just about money. Like this I have last week. Uh, what Koshin is saying that uh, why would Manny Pacquiao need money for his charity? Same thing with Ayanas. You know, this is what Donia Bay and Don Hanley told me that, you know, John, we can always give them money one time, but it's not right. We want to let these people to learn how to make money. They support him in terms of that they already gave them houses, but uh, in my case, okay, I gather money from people uh, to raise funds for, for this uh, beneficiary, you know. Like, but it, it doesn't have to be that you give them the cash. You buy something that will benefit or probably like enhance uh, their talent in, you know, or expertise in what they're doing, right? So every time they go to Indoro, I give them a little bit of cash, I give them stuff, we, we buy them sewing machine, we get them rice, we get them food and everything. And yeah, and another thing is that I, I try to improve their uh, personality. Because in the beginning when they went there, like, this, the, the self-esteem is like, very low and don't be like, so bothered about it because they don't even laugh or not, they don't even smile. And they don't even realize that they can do something really great, they do something really good. But every time they do shows abroad, I try to, share, to show them like, all the work that are being published all the magazine covers around the world that I went to show. So they really start to improve their personality and be more confident and they start to believe in themselves already. Wow, that, that's really beautiful. It goes beyond just the outer hills to take care of the inner, right? Exactly. That's beautiful. That's a great work on the talk. Um, my next question, I know that you also design beautiful gowns and you also do menswear. I do. And you have a fashion show coming up the 22nd in San Francisco and also the 28th here. So tell us a little bit about what we have to expect for the fashion show. For uh, San Francisco, I was invited by this group called Philippine International Day. This show is charity, 100% charity. And the entire process of the show to go to this Philippine Day. I think it's a, a group of uh, youth. Like, you know, like as fortunate youth uh, back in the Philippines. So they send them to school, they get them work to do, and they make like this just for this uh, fashion show. I, I'm not getting any single dollar here, so but I, I, you know, I'm very happy to do this. And they've been doing this for the last 15 years, so I really trust that the show will uh, come out really good and they will be able to raise a like, good amount of money to support these uh, children. I'll be showcasing my author collection in the set show, like 45 pieces of it, from kids uh, outfit to men's collection to my museum pieces collection to the grand finale, where I'm going to showcase a uh, white serpentine gown fully embroidered with uh, beige cocoa beads and by, by hand. And they did it for like three months for this single gown with an embroidery. Yeah. Three months for one single gown. I uh, had one gown actually which was born by Shamsi Susu in when I had it like Gala in uh, Canada. It's in Belch with like thousand pieces of it. Uh, they call it Sikki, it's like bamboo stick. And eight tribal women work on the single gown. They don't see that the clothes is uh, mounted in a mannequin and they do it intricately by their hand for like 2,000 hours. Yeah, about three months. And then like, when they brought it to Canada, I was interviewed with the media there. And the, the gown is like mounted in the mannequin, but they're not happy with seeing it in the mannequin. They told me, that, can you take up the, the gown from the mannequin and lay down on the table? Because they, they really like to scrutinize the gown and like, in and out of the gown. And they were, were so surprised like, that they put it upside inside and out. They don't see stitches at all, like the way they embroider it. Normally, when we do it, but really, like, you can see the stitches at the back, but here they cannot see any single thread. So this is one important, I think, uh, idea or talent that I share with them against the embroidery, where you cannot see the, the, the stitches behind the, the cloth. So clearly, it's very, it's rare. The, your pieces are artwork that's rare. I, I would call them uh, my museum pieces, and I will not ever sell them. But I think, I think that two of my gowns that are being made by the Mangyan, uh, there were these two uh, rich Filipinas who offered me a blank check for that. 
I was going to ask that. That was my next yeah. question. <laughs> and when they said, no, I'm not going to say it. She told me, oh, this is stupid. This is not check giant. But I told her that, oh, maybe that if I put my meat in there, it's going to be gone after a year, maybe. If I spend it for shopping or travel around the world, but it's not important to me at all. And yeah, I said, no, I cannot do that. But, you know, this is like, what's in my mind? I think that, because people are always asking me, what are you going to do with that gum? And then I said that, there's only two things in my mind, probably acquire the gum. It's either the Smithsonian Museum in Washington, D.C., or the Chipotle Museum in New York, because I wanted maybe to display there to represent our country, the Philippines. Beautiful. Uh, or Angelina Julie can have it. <laughs> <laughs> but she is my dream muse. <laughs> She's a humanitarian and it just goes together, right? Uh, exactly. But but for people who are interested in investing in some of your gowns or purchasing your gowns, do you have a website or do you have uh, you know a uh, store or a store? No, there's always because like uh, I used to have my shop in the Philippines but I shut it down because I've been traveling extensively for the last five years. I only happened to be like in the Philippines for like a month at least, every single year. Uh, beginning January, October, I'm already fully booked for shows all over the world. I'm doing important shows in Washington, D.C., in New York, Toronto, Montreal, and then I'm doing important shows for people of diplomats in uh, Brussels, Belgium in June, Florence, and then uh, Palermo and Luxembourg. And then I was invited to do the Metropolitan Fashion Week here in LA in October. And a big, big show in Manila in September for the Ayanas. Because uh, I promised to the mayor that I'm going to showcase the gowns that I made and collaborated with the Mangyana. She doesn't really know, but I'm going to make that show a tribute to her. Because I can see that she's, she really has a big heart for these uh, Mangyan women. Because I remember it. Before I tied to the United States, she brought me to uh, Mindoro and I was just observing her and she's not getting any younger anymore but I can see her sincerity in that moment. She really loved them again so much. So I told myself, I think it's about time to give tribute to her while oh, she's alive, you know. Like, yeah. she, she's done so much for these uh, people. Thank you, that's beautiful. Um, question for the Pacquiao Foundation. <laughs> So thank you for supporting this very worthy cause. Um, are you going to support all the projects, or is it just this project, or is it a testing, a testing, let's see what happens, or tell us about the, oh, first tell us about the Manny Pacquiao Foundation. Well, you know, um, I'm a part of it, so uh, I'm really thinking supporting the Manny Pacquiao Foundation. So uh, we're doing the, for almost three to five years already. Yeah, so Manny um, Pacquiao endorsed our program and actually he endorsed the program at your fashion show today. Yeah, yeah. 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 So uh, we'd like to get uh, video clips uh, with uh, Yuki uh, tonight and uh, we, you know, we, we plug in there. So that, that one, so. Uh, we are allowed to use his image, whatever you guys want to do it. Wow. And then we will be there to support you. So that's uh, that's a 95% of the program. So because we don't, we don't, you know, we don't want, we don't want to use the same money back uh, without his permission. Let's just say yes. I'm, 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 I'm go for it. So we, we, we're going to work one hand in hand, you know. So, um, it's so happy to get this and this, you know. Actually, I'm a missionary by myself with my hands. Yeah, um, wow. that's, uh, wow. that's three years ago. Yeah, we've been there in the mountain. You, you, know, you, you guys can be in the mountain. Why are you taking us to the mountain? Uh, yeah, you sleep with my hands, you know. Yeah, um, so, you know, I, I'm really touched with that. So, we are 100% right. Wow. And so, again, I you know my the Simpsons. Yeah, the things are a surprise, you know. I, I, this guy, I just know him last, last week. <laughs> it's so happy to work up a client, you know. <laughs> yeah, we meet him in the bathroom because we just finished our... <laughs> no, no, we just, we just finished our, our, our event for Manipakem. There's about 2,000, 3,000 people right there. 
And then some of them know who's this guy, and then they introduce him, are you? So they might be bored to sing some song. Are you related? Are you related to the sing song? And you love the Zosha, and you love the So that's about it, you know, and then I really appreciate the support of Mayor, Protan Mayor Santa Reina. He's go for it. And then we try to we try to get get him to be here, you know, to to know about your project. That's really you know, the, the, the mayor is very down to earth. So he got the support for that. And and thank you but um, it's um, thank you but guys for coming. But count us. We're there. Alright, thank, thank you. you. That's well said. I want to hear something for our deputy mayor of Carson City. Yeah. Oh, thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. And it is really, I'm equally thrilled and excited about the, the program that's being offered here to the city of Carson. First of all, on behalf of all the elected legislative body of the city of Carson and uh, almost 100,000 people of the city, I am proud to, the, I'm proud to represent for the last, uh, how shall I count the years? I got elected in 2003 and re-elected four times already here in the city of Carson. <laughs> and my term will end, oh, well, there's no term limit actually, but it's going to, for this, the last uh, term will be in 2019. That will be the end of my fourth term. And of course, no, well, uh, God knows, how sincere I am in being working for the citizens of Carson. Now, let me uh, piggyback on what uh, Gino said, Mr. Gino Chiocho, and uh, Simpson, of course, Simpson, uh, family, uh, last name is also known all over the world. And uh, let me tell you, it is a God given opportunity, I would say, for me to have met through my good friend, Commissioner Joey Cinco, Mr. Simpson and Gino Chiocho, and uh, equally, it's a God-given opportunity for me to be able to meet this internationally known and famous and creative individual. Uh, right now, I have, I have I'm having my goosebumps because I'm meeting this, this person here who I know is so sincere in uh, helping humanity, I would say. Okay, in particular, you know, you're talking about the Mangans and the, and the other citizens. But uh, working with the uh, uh, Patel team and looking forward to December 13, where at Veterans, I mean, at Carson Park, we are going to have a celebrity uh, basketball league, I believe, and uh, working with uh, JR, I call him John Richard Simpson, that's JR, okay, and we will make sure that um, as far as the city is concerned, um, we will make sure that that event is going to be successful. Why? Because if that the Ping Pacquiao event will be so successful in the city of Carson, then we will be more, we as a team, we will be more in a position to help uh, contribute to the success of the one and only fashion designer internationally known, John Agata. Thank you very much for Mr. Amato. At the Malan ng lahat ng citizens of Carson, 100,000, uh, uh, I am extremely excited to be able to be a part of you guys. Thank you. I'd like to ask the models what's their reaction? What's it like to work with Philippines' first echo fashion designer? Let's start with uh, Mr. Bonnet. Hello, guys. Thank you guys for coming. Uh, first off, um, I want to thank um, MJ because without him, I wouldn't become an international model. I was I was at work, you know. I was I was serving him, and uh, I was serving him and some of his friends, and John and John Simpson was there, and you know he asked me like, "Hey, how tall are you?" I was like, "I'm six feet," and he was like, "Hey, do you want to become a model?" I was like, "Wait, what do you mean?" 
you know. I, I didn't know he was serious or not. And it, so he, uh, he he told me to text him, you know, text him after work. And so I did. And then he was like, you know, send me a picture of uh, who you are. Like, show me your body. I was like, oh my goodness. <laughs> I'm not very comfortable with that, you know. And it's happy, yeah. And I don't know you yet. I don't know you yet, exactly. He's like, I just want to see your body. I was like, all right, I'll show you my body. Let me find a good one. I had to, I had to Photoshop my picture. You know? I had to make sure I look really good. So, and yeah, I had my first show in LA Fashion Week like two weeks ago. It was my first, you know, first time run on a runway, and I actually loved it. And you know, I'm, I'm very blessed to become an international model, and I'm looking forward to you know more of it. And I'm great to meet all these models. Great to meet. So yeah, I'm very honored to be a model for Jonah Blaza. He's actually such a great human being. Um, he's a tough designer and he's not bragging about him being a designer, which I love that about a person. Because in this market or in this industry, it's not about who you are, it's about what you do. So meeting him has been a blessing and I do thank MJ for the opportunity. He actually has gotten me through Facebook and he was like, hey, how tall are you? Would you like to be in a fashion show? And I was like, oh, yeah, I would love to, but I'm not six foot. And he's like, oh, that's not a problem. <laughs> so um, I've been modeling for a few years now. Professionally, it's been three. Now I'm competing. I'm doing more pageants than modeling. But uh, I mean, every experience is a blessing for me. Like I said before, um, meeting with John Blasa and not even uh, the clothing, but the meaning of what he is designing. And uh, like I said, I'm Latino, not Filipino, but I'm part of that because I come from a country which is very similar to Philippine, uh, Philippines. And I'm just so blessed and so thankful to be here with you guys and to have him come along in my life or vice versa, me coming along his way. Um, I thank you guys and I hope to see you at the fashion show. Yeah, um, for me, it's also such a pleasure to represent John Blaga. Again, um, as far as we know, he's very successful, but success is measured by you know the courage, how much work he has put in. It's not, I, I, I think I believe like it's not what you do, it's how you do it. And yeah, and the meaning of, you know, his like creativity and you know, this unique design. <laughs> All right, um, so our story is kind of like similar to Kevin over there. I met, I met MJ and he hooked me up with John Blaza. And when he proposed to me the, the story behind the bow tie, I felt really pr proud about representing this because it's not really just the bow tie, it's representing the story behind it and your country and it makes me proud of representing this bow tie, and I'm excited to walk on the show. So, what can we expect on the day, November 28, at 7 p.m. at Celebrity Center International, Mr. Blanza? Uh, I think it's going to be a real participant kind of show, but like we've been doing like beta, very formal very couture outfit but this time it's gonna be like a lot of show that put up fun party like it's very different from how type of show but then underwear you can wear that allowed to even like go fast there for the male models but yeah I'm just hoping that the models will do their best to re represent the Prada and most especially represent the Philippines and my advocacy to be have this uh, people back home so we have to make the Philippines be proud. Uh, proud you know. And by the way, guys, uh, that's well said. We have about 17, 18 international models that will be there. And we do have a lot of guests. Uh, producers from The Talk will be there. Producer from Entertainment Tonight. We got team superstar Lily Mar from Nickelodeon will be attending. So, what's up, guys? And uh, thank you so much for coming in. Uh, especially to Emma Demons, um, bestseller author, and John Fan of MOD Exchange. 
the 3G Swirl Unlimited Incorporation of Manny Pacquiao Foundation. And of course, our major sponsor, Dr. Tess, America's favorite dermatologist. David Salon brings out the best in you. And if you haven't tried our cheese rolls, go and try it right now. Ariel's Cafe, famous for cheese rolls. And of course, I Dance Studio, if you like to Zumba and want to look sexy and fit, come to I Dance Studio with Noni. Give them a round of applause, guys. And at Tino Blaza, I'd like to acknowledge them, uh, Alan Stupas. And JD, our makeup artist. And we got Mary Ann Sinisa, aka Venus Caritas. Yes, and we got Joe Huffman, our official photographer, personal, slash bodyguard, slash assistant, everything. All right, and we got Christina. She's our uh, another Tina Blaza coordinator as well, and very monitoring food guys. So watch out. And I'd like to thank uh, the commissioner for coming. Yes. It's going to be on November twenty eighth, five p.m. Red carpet. At seven p.m. is the fashion show. Right after the fashion show, there is a live auction. So, you can bring all your friends, if you're a huge fan of Manny Pacquiao, this is a very authentic merchandise signed by himself. And there are also a raffle guys in there, so. So if you haven't uh, got your tickets, all your friends, you can go to Eventbrite and just search for Jana Baza. So, that's basically it guys, thank you guys for coming and uh, I'll see you guys there.